Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to export an animated rendered sequence out of Autodesk Maya and then we're going to uh, later import it into Adobe Premiere and export it out as a video file. So um, the first thing I want to do before I even do anything um, I have this little animation I created it's just three different bouncing balls they're all doing the same exact thing um, nothing special but um, before I go ahead and render this sequence out I want to go ahead and go to file and set project and then I'm going to locate a folder at which I want to export this to. So in this case, I'm going to export it to this bouncing ball export folder. And I don't need to give it a name or anything. It's just a directory setting. And I'm going to go ahead and click set. When this window pops up, I'm going to go ahead and hit create default workspace. And we're just creating uh, uh, a workspace where when we render these images out, it's going to know where to send the files to. If we don't do this in advance, um, you will be uh, probably painstakingly ser searching through your C drive for your program files, through your Autodesk folder, until you finally locate where these images were sent out to. Because there's a default directory that uh, Maya will send an image uh, or a rendered image to, and in this case it would be a rendered image sequence, so many photo, uh, photos or images. So basically I'm going to click on create default workspace and now we've created a workspace in which uh, a folder which will maintain all of the uh, files that we're going to be sending out from here. So um, trust me, you don't want to skip that step. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to get some lighting in the scene because I'm going to be using the Arnold render and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Arnold and I've already covered the area light and the photometric light and I've kind of gone over all of them but I haven't really covered in detail the sky dome light or the physical sky so I'm going to go ahead and start by clicking on physical sky and now you'll see that the entire scene sort of turns dark and you may or may not have this uh, it's basically projecting sort of like the lighting scene kind of thing. Um, anyway, when we render this, I'm just going to do a quick little render here. Arnold render. There it goes. You'll see that it's really dark to begin with. So in order to lighten this scene up, this is almost like a dusk right and then you'll notice that the horizon line it's all black except for where my ground plane is so a couple things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, right click on my layer here and do select object I also could just change this to a blank and that will allow me to click on it um, or just select objects here by right clicking now I'm gonna tap R on my keyboard and just scale this larger and I'm going to scale this so it covers all of that black area that we saw that was not the ground plane. And it's going to cover it from one side of the uh, dome to the other side. And I want to make sure it fits the entire thing. So something like that. It's, it's reaching on the outward uh, ring of everything. And if I tap F, you can't really, you don't really see it in your top viewport. So using your perspective viewport might be better. And you'll notice that the entire ground plane is, inside, uh, is uh, extending outside of the sphere, which is what I want. So I'm going to zoom back in. I can click on one of these little uh, here. And I'm going to rename this Bouncing Sphere Mesh. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in by tapping F on uh, my one of my objects. I can click on one of my objects in my outliner and then just tap F and zoom in and that'll take me directly to all uh, center on that object. Now the next thing I want to do is I can run another, another test render but before I do that I already know that the lighting is really dark so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the lighting on here and I'm going to um, start by, I can't do it in my attribute editor just yet, I need to click on uh, in my outliner if you go to Windows Outliner, I have mine just docked right over here on the side. 
I'm going to click on this AI Sky Dome light. You'll notice your physical sky is located in here, but you'll also see if you click on the Sky Dome light, the intensity, so your, your lighting attributes are actually located right here. So I'm going to go ahead and up this intensity, and you'll notice in the little sample uh, image right here, it becoming brighter. So I'm going to start with 5, because I know uh, the default setting is too dark. And now I'm just going to run another quick test. OK. Perfect. So I'm happy with the lighting there. I know that my ground plane extends as far as it can. And um, you'll also notice one other thing. You'll notice that dark line right across the back of the basically where the hemisphere is. I'm not going to change it now, but a way to sort of bypass that whoops, is if I were to raise my ground plane, and I'm not going to do this now because then I would have to change all the animation on all of these three balls, and I brought it up and ran a re-render, it should start to uh, do, 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 become less and less and less and less. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. So the next thing I would like to do is I'm, I'm just focused on just this part of my animation here. And what I'm going to do from this point is I'm going to go to view and I'm going to set my camera settings to the resolution gate. And you'll see it says 1280 by 720 right here. And that's displaying uh, my uh, pixel or aspect ratio here. Um, at what I'm actually going to see inside of my render. Now we can change that under our render settings. So we go to render and render settings and that's under the rendering tab over here. So make sure you select the rendering tab and then go to render and render settings. Now from here we're going to make sure we're on the Arnold renderer and then we're going to go ahead and change some of these uh, settings in here. I'm going to keep mine at a PNG format um, and interlaced 8, INT 8 is totally fine. And then I'm going to keep this on and I'm going to keep everything sort of uh, at this moment right here is all set. I don't have to worry about the file name prefix, the image format at PNG. You could do a JPEG if you'd like them to be smaller uh, image uh, file sizes. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll select a JPEG and I could even adjust the quality. So I'll keep it at 100. And then under my frame animation extension I could go to by default it's like name dot number dot extension or name num name extension on, under single frame we're gonna change it to name underscore number dot extension and I feel that this is just the easiest way uh, the file name uh, to sort of save out to or save out as because um, this way the first first of all the name of the file will be first then it's gonna go underscore and then it's gonna number each image we render out now you'll notice the uh, naming up here and this is sort of how it's gonna export out by default I believe it's just at zero or one um, and that's on our frame padding but you'll notice on zero one nothing's there but if I continue to bring this up I'm gonna add zeros to this and I'm gonna go with four and I think that's a pretty good number to work with because the way the file not uh, naming system works in the file folders it could be like if you if you don't have any frame padding in there with the zeros beforehand it can renumber it sort of weird so you might have like one and then ten and then two and then three all the way and, and and it kind of renumbers everything kind of weird um, so be sure to add frame padding and it's gonna make yourself uh, make your life much easier when it comes to any type of animation you ever do by including those zeros before the number because these are going to be numbered images that we're gonna import into Adobe Premiere and you'll notice that this is the first image in our sequence and this is going to be the last image in our sequence now um, we haven't gotten to it yet but my start frame is going to be one so that's going to be my f start frame here the ball animated 0001.jpg and then my end frame is going to be 20 and then by frame you can set this to be uh, by default it's at one and that's basically rendering frame one frame two 
frame three, frame four, frame five, frame six, etc. So you could change this to every two frames. You could change it to every half frame, every 0.25 frames it's going to render out. So keeping it at by frame one is definitely what you want to do. It's the easiest way to sort of render your images. Now the next thing we're going to cover over here, if you, I don't believe JPEGs will hold an alpha on it. Maybe it will um, nowadays, but it definitely didn't used to. Um, but if you had this alpha channel mask and you wanted to render it with sort of that transparent background that you see in like a Photoshop file where you have the checkerboard checker the white and gray checkerboard in the background so there's you know like it's transparent there's nothing there we can't do it with this image scene uh, because of the sky dome light that we're using and the we're rendering out the sky itself so that'll be part of the image but had we not included the sky in here you could essentially um, render out when there's nothing in here the uh, transparency so you don't need to have this on I'll leave it on but it doesn't make a difference at this point unless we didn't have that background that sky dome light and the physical sky so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into my oh and my renderable camera I'm just gonna use my perspective camera now under image size I'm gonna have mine at HD 720 um, I feel it might be easier for you all to see and you know see clearly while I'm um, when when we finish the rendered image and we start bringing it into Adobe Premiere so I'm gonna keep mine at HD 720 I think it'll be easier for everyone to see in the in the screen capture however um, I'd recommend trying to do HD 540 if I were you and what this is is a uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio so there's really two common aspect ratios that are used regularly um, and I would say the other one is faded out even faded out a while ago so there's 16 by 9 aspect ratio which is widescreen so um, your 16 by 9 will be your 1280 by 720 or your 1080 so some of you may be familiar with like 7 uh, 1080i or 1080p uh, I believe that's interlaced and progressive if I remember right um, for your televisions when you're sort of changing the resolution on there so that's basically what we're doing and that's uh, the the actual pixel size of that is 1920 by 1080 uh, pixel size and that's the resolution at, of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio uh, image so um, anyway you I'm sure you may be hearing things nowadays of like 4k um, like a 4k TV or even now we have 8k and that's getting into just it's the same aspect ratio at 16 by 9 however it's going to be um, a much higher quality image because it's going to have much more pixel uh, information in there. So we're going to keep it at pixel aspect at maintain ratio pixel aspect and our width will be uh, you can select whatever and if you have a slower computer go ahead and select something much smaller even 320 by 240 if, if you feel like the rendering is taking too long or something like that um, just go with a really small file size that's totally not a problem but um, I recommend uh, trying you know an HD 540 um, but like I said I'm gonna stick with 720 and in here this should be size units pixels um, we're not gonna mess with any of that and then resolution at 72 is perfectly fine and then this is all good too and then I'm gonna go ahead and click close now from here I've gone ahead I'm gonna run a test render and here we go I'm gonna run a quick test render just to see and I'll notice that actually on frame 10 is where I want to frame my image so um, under view camera settings resolution gate um, this is where you get this information from the 1280 by 720 and that's because I have it as HD 720 um, if you did 540 it's like 960 by 540 and then if you did uh, what is it the 640 by 320 or something like that um, that will be displayed up here and that's by uh, pixels 
So anyway, now that I've kind of explained all that, I'm ready to start framing out my scene, and I want to make sure that I have it where the uh, my bouncing balls are going to be making contact, because that's really the action I want to see. That's sort of the point of the bouncing ball. And I want my bouncing balls to be out of frame when I start the render. All right? Out of frame when I start the render. And I might even go back just a little bit here, and we'll do something like that. So they're going to come off screen, they're going to land, make contact, and then bounce off screen. So it's always good to run quick little tests just to make sure, and I'm going to tap escape to cancel my render early, just to make sure that you know, you're pleased with the scene and everything's working well for you. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I've set all my render settings. I've got my resolution gate here so I can see exactly what's going to be in frame when I render it. And then um, I've set my ground plane and I've also created my lighting. So um, we're ready to export and I set my project. So we're ready to export this or render it out. And the way we're going to do this is under obviously our uh, rendering tab. We're going to go to render and then we're going to go to render sequence and I'm gonna click the little settings box real quick just to kinda of show you our current cameras perspective and if you click on this little alternate output file location it should just take you straight to your default uh, uh, where you set the project to and you'll even notice it says uh, it should say something like images so you're gonna have an images folder where all of these images are gonna be rendered to so everything else is totally fine. I'm not going to mess with any of these settings. I just wanted to sort of double check to see where it thought it might be going. I didn't want it to come up in like a my default folder. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on render sequence. And when it's finally done rendering, um, we'll get into Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to pause the video now. I'm going to render the sequence out because it's going to take a few moments. And then um, we'll dive right into Adobe Premiere. So now that my uh, image sequence is rendered out, um, you'll see that it pops up in this render view here. I'm going to close out of my render view. And now you'll see down here, sequence rendering completed. OK? What I'm going to do from here is open up Adobe Premiere. And I'm going to just do a new project. And then I'm going to name my project um, okay and then I'm going to locate the location of where I want to save this to and I'm going to save it right in my bouncing ball export folder okay select folder just as we set a project folder when we were setting our project in Maya, we're doing the same thing here. So when we render out this uh, video, it'll know where to go, and it's going to know where to save all the uh, editing files and everything like that. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to keep all this the same, but I just want to show you display format under the video tab here. You could change this to frames, but I'm going to keep it at time code for now because I prefer to. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. That's all I needed to uh, uh, cover on that. So from here, we need to import our image sequence. So I could right click where it says import media to start that's under the project tab in case it doesn't do that by default you can right click and go to import but you can also do file import or control I so now I'm gonna go into my bouncing ball export folder into the images and I'm gonna select on the very first image and I'm gonna click on this little image sequence uh, checkbox it's really tiny it's in the bottom left corner um, and it's crucially important to click that so just click on the very first frame and click on image sequence and now we're gonna click open from here I wanna uh, change I wanna interpret my footage at a different uh, fr uh, frame rate excuse me 
Uh, so I'm going to right click on the image. It's directly behind me. Um, you should see the top corner of it there. Um, right over here. And I'm going to right click on here. And I'm going to go to modify and interpret footage. This is extremely important to know, especially when working with frames and animation and things like that, because it can import at strange frame rates sometimes. So by default, it's coming in at use frame rate from file 29.9700, um, which is basically like uh, at uh, on video uh, code. That's that's literally like the standard for 30 frames per second, but a lot of animators use 24 frames per second so any let's just pretend you go to the movie theater and you um, pretty much almost almost maybe depending on which theater you go to obviously uh, you go to and they have a projector there displaying the film that's filmed uh, that's being displayed at 24 frames per second um, unless they have like a digital projector it may be at 30 it could even be as high as 60 frames per second um, but that's pretty new standard uh, new much newer equipment but your standard um, old projectors that are in a majority of movie theaters display films at 24 frames per second and 24 frames per second is perfectly fine for this and um, we're gonna go ahead and click OK and animators like to use fewer frames so we don't have as much work to do later. So I'm going to click OK. And now with that being said, I've got to, uh, I'm going to click and drag over here and release. And now what I've done is I've created my bouncing ball and I'm going to, I can view it in here. I can just click play and you'll see it just plays a little bouncing ball sequence right so from this point I'm gonna go ahead and click inside of this box and just make sure it's highlighted um, because otherwise if it won't work right so make sure this box is highlighted you can just click inside of it and do file export media it'll just take a second for it to sort of load up on at least on my system uh, maybe yours is quicker and what we're going to do from here is we're going to um, rename the video file. We're going to set and make sure that it's uh, exporting to a folder that we like it to go to. And then we are also going to uh, check the compression format. So we'll start with the compression here. And we're going to do an H.264. This is a really standard uh, compression or encoding format it calls it compression format that um, really does a great job of keeping high quality images at a uh, uh, a lower file size export so um, especially as a student um, I when I was a student um, I pretty much in every other classmate I had uh, only rendered in H.264 unless it was something a little bit fancier that may be submitted to a film festival or something. So I'm going to check my, I'm going to keep my preset at match source high bitrate um, and high bitrate output for HD sources, yada, 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 pixel, aspect, TV, standard. So this is totally fine. Um, and just so you know, you have tons of different things in here. There's no way I can cover them all. But if you were uploading to YouTube, it even has these default YouTube or Vimeo, uh, Twitter um, for sort of this new, uh, newer uh, online formats. So I'm just going to match the source, which is the rendered image I had. And then you can always go ahead and scrub in here and check your image. Uh, this is sort of the preview. And now from here, I'm going to click on the output name. And I'm going to put it in my bouncing ball export folder. And I'm going to simply name this uh, bouncing ball render export and it's going to be in an mp4 format um, totally fine um, like as if you remember like mp3 is for video or for audio files um, for like iPod yeah iPods and iPads and all that um, it's a it's a high quality uh, but also keeps the file size um, lower than than it would 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now from here you can have export video if you have audio in your file. You can export the audio. I'm going to leave it on by default and then everything else uh, don't you don't need to click use maximum render quality it's gonna increase the size of your file by probably a lot and then also it's gonna take much 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 longer to render so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and click export so my render finished and I just wanted to go ahead and show you um, whoops what it looks like so there's my rendered animation um, and that's all there is to it so um, if you have any questions be sure to shoot me a message um, if you open this in QuickTime you can go into like view or some kind of setting at the very top and set it to loop and it'll look like a continuously looping bouncing ball um, and yeah so um, if you have any questions for me again go ahead feel free to shoot me a message ask me whatever uh, you need to and then also uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you for watching